Hi guys, Daniel here, and I know the Armal is coming up in probably less than a month, I forgot. But anyways, because of that, let's do an Armal problem. This is going to be 2014 team problem number 6. So let's first take a look at the problem. We have uh, W equals 0, 0, A equals 7, 0, S equals 7, 1, and H equals 0, 1. Which means that, well, let's first draw it out, of course. W, A with uh, around seven points in between, something like this. And then we have a uh, S at seven comma one and an H at zero comma one. And we want to compute the number of ways to tile rectangle wash with triangles of area one half and vertices at lattice points on the boundary of wash. So we want to consider the lattice points on the boundary of wash. So these points. So uh, we want to tile this with triangles of area one half. So first we got to ask ourselves, what exactly are the triangles of area one half that have vertices on these lattice points? Well, first off, obviously we can't have all three vertices of the lattice of the triangle on the same row, because if we do, then it's just going to have an area of zero. So we got to have two uh, vertices on one row and one vertex on another row. In other words, without loss of generality, let's just consider having two vertices on the bottom and one vertex at the top. So now that we know that uh, one vertex is on, the, is on the top and two vertices are on the bottom, then let's consider how to find the area. Well, if we just let the base be the, the side formed by the two vertices on the bottom, then the height is just going to be one because this is one. It's always going to be one. So in order for the triangle to have area one half, we have to have the base times height over two equal one half. And since the height is one, it means the base is also one. So for all triangles that have area one half and vertices on the lattice points, we're going to have the triangle be have two vertices that are adjacent on the bottom and one vertex on the top, or two adjacent vertices on the top and one vertex on the bottom. So now that we know what triangles have area one half in wash, now we gotta figure out how exactly to tile the rectangle wash in the first place. So in order to do that, well, we should probably first figure out how many triangles we're gonna use in the first place. So let's take a look at what exactly uh, makes a triangle. So we know that every single triangle must have a base and uh, like a base like this where two of the vertices are adjacent. In addition, we also know that every single one of these segments has, has to be the base of a triangle because if it's not the base of a triangle then this entire region right here is not going to be covered. So the t rectangle wash is not going to be tiled. So since each segment of length one has to be a base of a triangle and each triangle must have its base as a segment and that means that the number of triangles is simply the number of segments of length one that we use and this is simply well we have one two three four five six seven so seven on the top seven on the bottom that's a total of 14 triangles So we have 14 triangles total that we're going to use to tile this rectangle. So now what remains is to actually find the number of ways to tile with these 14 triangles. So we know that each triangle is going to have a base that consists of two consecutive lattice points. But maybe we can use this to our advantage again. In particular, let's consider how we might go about uh, formulating a single way to tile this rectangle. So let's first get rid of this. Okay, so uh, let's first take a look at a random tiling. So I'm just gonna draw some random tiling right here. Uh, the random tiling is gonna look something like this. So did you notice anything about how I tiled it? 
Well, um, the way I titled it, if you thought about it for a second, could be also described like this. So I drew this first rectangle, uh, sorry, drew this first triangle right here, and it used this base. And then the next triangle I drew that is adjacent to this triangle, well, it's going to use this base. And then the next triangle that is adjacent to this triangle that I drew, well, it used this base. And then the next one used this base, then it used this base, then it used, or no, that's not right, then it used this base, then it used this base, then it used this, 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 then it used this. So you may notice that um, I basically used the either the top side a base from the top or the base from the bottom but no matter which uh which one which row i used the base was always going to be the one that on the left most that wasn't used yet so it's impossible to still be over here on the left and use a base way over here on the right because then that wouldn't create a triangle that's adjacent to the most recent triangle that i drew so uh, we can use this idea that every single tiling is determined by an order in which you choose the bases. And, uh, well, I suppose that you can try proving that this is, in fact, a bijection, but if you think about it, it's kind of obvious already because you start out with this rectangle, and if you want to create a rectangle, a triangle that's has that is adjacent to this left side, then it's going to either be this triangle or this triangle. There can't be any other triangle that has this uh, left side as one of its sides. And then after that, well, for the next triangle, the base is either going to be over here or it's just going to be over here. So again, you can only choose the leftmost unused uh, segment. So in fact, there is a bijection between the number of ways to tile the triangles and the number of ways to choose these bases in order from left to right. So now it remains to count how many ways we can choose the bases in order from left to right. And well, let's label choosing a base from the top T and choosing a base from the bottom B. What we're essentially trying to do here is try to create an ordering of T's and B's such that there are seven T's and seven B's, right? Because if we choose T, then we already know that the base we actually choose is just going to be the leftmost base that we haven't used yet. So we don't actually need to describe which one, which top base we're going to use. We're just going to use a base from the top, in particular, the leftmost unused base. So we just need to order seven T's and seven B's. Thankfully, this is very easy since the number of ways is just 14 true seven, which, well, gives our answer. And since I'm lazy and I don't want to calculate 14 true 7, um, this will be left as an exercise to the reader. But there we have it. So let's first take a look at the problem. Find the minimum possible value of the cyclic sum of A over B cubed plus 4. Given that A, B, C, D are non-negative real numbers such that A plus B plus C plus D equals 4, 